Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this quick presentation. Today we'll be discussing how to structure your CV to help you gain a graduate job in the video games industry. Before I begin, let me make a short introduction. My name is Andy Driver. I am the Operations Manager for Grads and Games. We are an initiative which has been launched by Aardvark Swift over 10 years ago with really just one goal, to help students become more employable for the video games industry. My other role is to lead the graduate recruitment team at Aardvark Swift. For over 30 years, we've been helping people to get jobs in the games industry, such as programmers, artists, designers, and pretty much anything else you can think of. Our initiative is backed by several leading game studios that you can see on the left of your screen here. We would not be able to do what we do without these guys. The reason why they get involved in what we do is because they're all fantastic places for graduates to go and work. Uh, and they are great places for you to start your career in the games industry. So I want to say a big thanks to them. And if you are a graduate looking for work, these are the kind of places you should have a look at. So let's get to the reason why we are here today. And that is to explore how you should structure your CV for a job in the games industry. I'm going to preface this by saying that there's lots of conflicting advice out there uh, regarding uh, your uh, CV and how to write it. What I'm going to tell you is specifically about how to write CV for a graduate job in the video games industry. First things first, your portfolio link needs to be right at the top of your CV. Don't hide it away in between contacts like your email address and your phone number. Uh, your portfolio is where you can showcase your work and exactly what you can do. And that is what employers are going to want to look at. So make sure it's easy for them to find and easy for them to access. Following this, you should have a short profile piece. It used to be commonplace to write covering letters for each job that you applied for uh, a few years ago. Some would be even a side of A4, but in today's world, it's really just not necessary. It's really best just to go with something concise and straight to the point. You want to introduce yourself, tell us about any significant relevant achievements and lay out your mission statement. Tell us what you want to do and why you're applying for the roles that you're applying for. Directly underneath this is where you should list your technical skills and keep this just to technical skills. Don't be tempted to add in any soft skills that you know studios are looking for. Uh, if you tell me that uh, you are a great communicator and just list it in a, uh, in a list like this, it's not going to tell me anything. You need to show evidence of that. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Uh, one additional point is don't be tempted to put any kind of ranking system alongside these skills. So seeing people rate themselves out of stars, with dots, with percentages, all sorts of things. There's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, all it does is tell us what you can't do very well. It just highlights those uh, areas where you haven't got that, that much experience on. But also, who are you ranking yourself against? As a graduate, nobody is expecting you to be an expert. So if you haven't got much experience on a certain software or a certain tool, that's fine. Uh, you can just say you've had some experience with it. And if it is really important to a certain uh, studio, if a certain tool or a certain software is important to them, they'll ask for more clarification from you. Uh, but right now, just put what you've had experience in this. Next is where you would put in your relevant experience. So this is experience working in games, whether this be an internship, work experience, freelance work. At this point, that is more important to an employer than your degree. You can be detailed here. Tell us exactly what you did. If you are lucky enough to secure an internship in a game studio, you'll know that you're not just making tea and coffee for three months. You are actually going to be doing the job. You're going to be working on the game. So tell us exactly what you did and what you had exposure to. Next is where you would put your education. And obviously your degree is the most important thing here. Keep it clear, keep it simple. Include dates of when you graduate, include your grades and predicted grades. Uh, you can also list modules as well. So you don't need to tell us every single module you've ever done, but anything that's particularly relevant to the kind of jobs that you're applying for, tell us about that. Following this would be any other work experience. So if you've ever had a job working in retail or in a bar or in a cafe, this is where you would put that. And you don't have to be really detailed with this. You don't need to tell us every single task that you did because most people can probably work it out. Uh, however, this is exactly where you can showcase some of the softer skills that you know studios are going to look for. 
So tell us that you really enjoyed working as part of a team to showcase that you've got teamwork skills. Tell us about how you really enjoyed communicating with colleagues and members of staff and uh, customers. Use real life examples like this is a great way to be able to showcase your soft skills uh, and let studios know that you've got the skills needed for a professional environment. The final piece that I recommend is a hobbies and interests section. You'd be surprised just how many people just don't include this or they just write a bullet point of lists of activities. This is where you can get across your passion for games and games development. And it gives people a small indicator of who you are and why they would ultimately want to work with you. Uh, it might be a good idea if you want to work in the games industry to mention you like playing games. Tell us what kind of games you like playing. Tell us what got you interested in the first place. Um, tell us why and how that's influenced your decisions in the future. You'll be really surprised just how many people don't put that in. Uh, we use this particular CV as a great example. Jake is a real person. This is not a made up CV. Uh, as you can see in this piece, Jake mentions his interest in VR quite a few times and how it's influenced his work in his studies. Jake actually ended up securing a role at a studio working on VR games. So this part of the CV would have really helped that. My final piece of advice on CVs is keep it to two pages as maximum. At this point in your career as a, as a graduate, you should be able to get everything you need into two pages. And that is everything that you should need to know about writing a CV for a graduate job in the video games industry. Please follow us on all of our social channels here at Grads and Games and at Aardvark Swift. And if you have any questions or if you want any more personalised advice on your CV or if you are looking for a graduate job in the video games industry, please send me across an email to andy at gradsandgames.com. Thanks for listening.